Hi guys, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's episode, we're featuring a couple who turned a short bus into a cozy tiny home on wheels to pursue an affordable lifestyle away from California's high rent prices. Okay, let's go inside of the bus and I'll show you my favorite part of the build. What I like most about this couple is that they aren't afraid to share the challenges and the things they would do differently in their build. So if you're looking to build a schoolie one day, this is a great video for you. And if you just like videos like this one, where we showcase stories of people living alternatively in amazing homes, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. Selena and I'm Marcelo. Welcome to our home on wheels. Billy the bus. When I was 18, I moved to San Diego to pursue skateboarding. A few years later, I met Selena. To meet him and eventually marry him and get to travel thanks to skateboarding and live just a really fun, exciting life was definitely more than I could have asked for. We knew we wanted a change. We knew San Diego just wasn't sustainable for us anymore. I just began sort of daydreaming and following pages on Instagram and all those cute vans everywhere just kind of sucked me in. And I think that was the beginning of it. It definitely evolved from there over the next couple years. Mm -hmm. So once we decided that we were gonna go nomadic, we started looking for vans. It was after COVID, the vans were way more expensive than they should be. Maybe we should look for something else different that it's more affordable so we can spend all the money into the build. Came across the school bus and it was love at first sight. The bus was listed on Craigslist for 10,000. We offered eight. Afterwards, we realized she needed a little bit of maintenance. And so we put about another 6,000 into it in maintenance. The build itself was probably another 20 at least. Cause I'd say 35. we're about 35,000. One year's rent in San Diego. We bought a bus, we turned it into a beautiful home that we love and we can drive it for years to come. So from the day that we bought the bus and the day that we finished building, it was six months. We've been in Billy for about six months now. But it's so gratifying to get hands on and do it yourself. I would say if you're considering it at all, then you're, you've already got one foot in the door and you should just give it a go because it's a great adventure and you got nothing to lose. So for the color of the bus, we chose this teal color. Both me and Selena loved it. This is the original door. This was the hardest project we did. We bolted the door together. So you see right here, there's a metal bar on the back. We love it. It's still not perfect. We're working on it. We'll get it there. So this window, it's like when they convert, like this is a Chevy Express conversion into a school bus. They take the passenger seat out and then they add this, this whole panel here with this window and that helps you see when you're driving see when you're changing lanes and you see cars next to you you can use this window and the doors to help you be a safer driver we have like six tires on the bus because we have dualies on the back they're pretty affordable they came i think they're like a little over a hundred dollars each which is pretty unreal for a rig this big there are lt tires which is it's meant for like heavy vehicles so we have two Air Max fans, one over the bed and one over the kitchen. We have four solar panels at 400 watts. There are 100 watt panels each. Our solar panels go down to our batteries. We have three batteries at 150 amp hours each. It was taking too long for us to finish the build and we decided not to do the deck. Uh, it's one of my regrets. I kind of wish we had the deck and a ladder. <laughs> So right here we have our window deletes. This is where our bed is. So we wanted the bedroom to be nice and cozy, dark, so we can sleep. I think I kind of went overboard with the metal that I use and made it something really thick. 
So it was very heavy. It was just me and Selena trying to lift this thing up. It's one of my favorite things. I wouldn't have done it without it. If I was gonna do it again and do it differently, I would probably use some thinner metal. It doesn't need to be that thick. Make it a little easier on you, so a little lighter, a little easier to work with. So right here, we have our outdoor shower. Probably one of my favorite things that we put on the bus. We have a shower inside and one outside. Unfortunately, they're all made of plastic, the insides of it. It's not super well built. So they, it broke the inside and it leaked all over the inside of our walls. Right now it's out of commission, but I'm gonna have to like take it apart and I'm gonna build the back of it myself and make it sturdy. Show you the garage and where I keep all my fun toys. So I have to take my bike apart. I take the wheels off and I put the bike up here and I have my skateboard here. I got my tools. The bed is right above the garage. And we also have a water tank back on that side. I mean, there's so much stuff in here. It's a lot of space. Since the opening is kind of small, sometimes it's kind of hard to access stuff. But I feel like after a couple months on the road, I figure out the perfect Tetris mode to like keep things in a way that they they come out easy and I can get to everything. So right here we're on the driver's side of the bus. Here we have the water filling port and we got 48 gallons of fresh water. It's more than enough for us to be out in the wild about a week, maybe 10 days if we try to stretch it out. Here we have our gas tank. We have, a, I think it's like 32 gallons of, of gas. We get about 10 to 12 miles per gallon. Right here we have a uh, shore power. We thought we were gonna need it as a lot because we built it in Texas and it was 105 degrees. So we're like, well, we're gonna have to have an AC unit and we have to plug into a, a power source to run an AC. Come to find out, we hardly ever use it. It's nice if you're gonna park at RV parks all the time and you have access to power but normally you're out in the wild and you don't have power other than your uh, solar so if we build it again we probably won't put one. This is our latest addition to the bus. We decided that we were handy enough to build a toolbox for the bus with the help of a friend and I really like it some extra storage. Um, it was a lot of work it was a lot more work than we expected to have building it and there's a, already things that I would have done differently. I would put the hinges on the top so it opens up. So we got a gas engine. It's a Chevy 3500. It's a six liter engine. I heard great things about it. I didn't know anything about the engine when we bought the bus and I'm pleased with it. it haven't given us many problems. <laughs> okay, let's go inside of the bus and I'll show you my favorite part of the build. So welcome to the inside of our home. These countertops are probably the first thing you see when you walk into the bus. It was one of the things that I really wanted to build. It took several days for the resin to cure and you have to do it in steps. So it was a learning curve and I'm honestly shocked that they came out as well that, as they did. The, I love the color, like there's a lot of black in our bus and wood, so it ties everything together. The countertop goes up, is removable and it hides our shower and toilet. It's a cassette toilet. We can just take that out and just put our curtains in these hooks. The tile for the shower is made of plastic and it's waterproof, it's clip-on, so it's very easy to use. You don't have to grout. I mean, got it at Home Depot, super easy to get it and it was easy to work with. The shower pan that we went for is two foot by two foot. So it's a square. It's a little tight, but it works for us. Okay, so now we're gonna hand it out to Selena and she's gonna finish the inside of the bus. We wanted something that was spacious. We didn't wanna to feel too crammed. We knew we were downsizing dramatically. We've got 90 square feet to share. So we wanted to make sure we had space to move in the hallway. You know, one can be cooking, one can be at the dinette, and we're not constantly bumping into each other. We wanted spacious, we wanted it to be beautiful, and just something we could really enjoy being inside of. 
I'm about 5'2", Marcella's 5'8", so we have plenty of space in the bus. Um, we did not do a roof raise, which a lot of people opt for, which is great if you're tall, but for us, we're fairly small people and we fit really well in here. We feel like it's very spacious for us. It's cedar plank tongue and groove. Got it at Home Depot. We thought it was gonna be expensive and really time consuming, but in the end, I think it cost maybe about $300, $350 at the most, and we put it together in two days. It was really easy and it just clicked in really nicely. We're really proud of it. We love the way it looks. It just gives a really warm feel to the bus and works with our countertops really nicely. So this is our kitchen. It was kind of the focal point. We knew we wanted a nice space to prepare meals. I love to cook and Marcella loves to eat. So we wanted it to be functional and really beautiful. And so we've got the black sink. It's nice and deep. Uh, room for a lot of dishes, though we do try to wash them pretty regularly. This is our induction cooktop. I thought I wanted all electric. I had seen this in some other van builds that I really liked and I was just set on having this cooktop. I've learned that it does use quite a bit of power. We don't have any propane in the bus. Everything's electric. So between our hot water heater, our electric cooktop and our electric kettle, uh, we definitely have to monitor how much battery we've got. These are our very custom upper cabinets. We kind of put this off to the very, very end. We knew we needed storage up here and I wanted maximum storage for my dishes, my pots, pans, and my food. Marcella wanted to keep it kind of minimal. And even at 12 inches, we still hit our heads when we're brushing our teeth often, but we're happy with it overall. We definitely wanted something to slide. We've seen all the stories about things falling out of cabinets when you're driving and we knew we needed some secure cabinets up here. So, so far so good. And these right here, these tracks that the cabinets actually slide in are trellis frames from Home Depot. We were just wandering the aisles trying to find something easy and we found these and they're perfect. We picked up these little boards already pre-cut. We drilled the holes in them and they slide right into the trellis frame. We had a lot of different types of water filtration systems in our apartments and Marcelo is always pretty picky about how his water tasted. I grew up just drinking out of the faucet in San Diego, um, but through our marriage and years together, we came to the conclusion that good tasting clean water was a priority for us. So we did a lot of research on how we were gonna filter our water in the bus. And we came across this life straw pitcher. It's glass and it holds quite a bit. It's got two filters in it and we think the water tastes great and we trust that it's really clean and well filtered and uh, yeah, we couldn't live without it. It's, it's pretty important to us. I definitely was always a coffee drinker and I've converted Marcello, so it's become our morning routine. It's something we really enjoy, probably my favorite part of the day. It's just quiet, we haven't let the world in yet, um, and we just sit together and have coffee either at the table or sometimes outside if the weather's nice. So coffee is definitely our ritual and a really important part of getting our day started right. Our hot water heater is down here. It's a four gallon. It's not instant. We do have to turn it on. It uses a bit of power, but the water is piping hot and we really like it. Tons of, tons of storage down here. We really like how it came out. So for these kitchen cabinets, we actually got really lucky. And my cousin had a bunch of extra cabinets in his garage from a really nice house that they were just kind of like demoing them. He told us we could have whatever we wanted. Uh, we took two pieces and kind of just chopped them up and put them back together. It worked perfectly and they're beautiful. And we really like them. And then we purchased these leather handles online and had those put on. For the wheel well, it was taking up precious space in our kitchen, unfortunately. We had to cut out this bottom drawer here to accommodate it. We wish we would have done it a little differently. We could have left the other drawer front here and maybe just covered that. But 
ultimately, I don't think anyone really notices it unless you look super close and it is great storage under there. We tend to shove dirty clothes down there or like extra cooking supplies, whatever's floating around. The backsplash, we didn't really love this backsplash. It is easy. It was a stick on. We got it at Lowe's. We wanted something black. I wanted a hexagon, but we wanted something a little shinier and we ended up with this matte gray. It's just what we could find in stock. This is our fridge. It's a top loading fridge and it's dual compartment. So we can have it turn to two refrigerators fridge freezer or two freezers if we're really trying to stock up on ice cream. One thing with this style refrigerator that we knew going into, we thought it wouldn't be an issue, was the fact that when it's pulled out like this, you can't access these drawers. So when you're cooking, you've got to push the fridge back in before you can get your plates out of this drawer. So we realize there's limitations in bus life and that's just one that we're dealing with, but um, for some people that might just be a deal breaker. So definitely something to consider when you're placing your fridge and your kitchen cabinets. This is the bedroom in the back of the bus. We built these short walls, sort of half walls we call them, to give a little bit of separation, but we wanted it to feel open. We knew it was a small space already, and so we kept them pretty short. We can put things up here on the edge, which is nice, and there's storage behind, so that's really convenient. The bed is a queen-size mattress. It is 10 inches tall, which I think is the one thing we kind of regret. It's very comfy, but I don't think we needed 10 inches of space. Um, every square inch is precious here. So we could have gone with a slightly shorter mattress. Lots of extra storage in these pillows. That's like the tried and true nomad life hack. Extra blankets and towels in there. And then we've got our clothes up here and a little bit of extra clothing at the foot of the bed. One of the questions we get asked a lot is where does the passenger sit? So this is the designated passenger seat. We did install a seat belt, clicks in and I feel super safe. When we were building initially, we thought we wanted something convertible. Again, we've seen a lot of things online, a lot of dinettes that fold into beds for guests and we really wanted that. And we do still kind of wish we had that option. But ultimately what was important for us, we knew was to have a table that we could have meals at and play games on. We're super happy with how this turned out. The table is really large. It gives us plenty of space to put a laptop up, do some work. We spend a lot of time at this table. We searched for a table online and couldn't find one to the specifications we needed. We knew we wanted to mount it here to these structural beams to make it secure. We didn't want a leg in front because we wanted to be able to slide in and out easily. And so it needed to be a specific size. We bought some wood, painted it black, and then we tossed around a few different ideas. We thought maybe about doing a map or something and came to the conclusion that photos of our travels in the past would be great. So we printed a bunch of photos, cut them to size. It was a nice little art project we could do in the house together. And we got them to fit just the way we wanted, threw some resin over the top and installed it. We had a table. When we printed these photos and put them on the table, they were very stark black and white with a couple of them being in color. As time has gone on, it's only been six months, um, the resin reacted with the photographs and turned them all sort of a pinkish color, which we still like, we think is cool, but now the sun is starting to affect them and the UV rays are bleaching them out a little bit. So we think in the near future, we're probably gonna have to reprint these photos and do another layer just to freshen it up a little bit. The next thing to talk about is our power system. It's right here on this wall. One issue we've got with the inverter, not only is it gigantic, but the fan kicks on pretty regularly when we're running it. And if you can hear, it's noisy. 
I don't know if we need this much power. We have this big one for shore power and we rarely hook in. That might change in the summer when we need to run an air conditioner or something. But for now, we feel like it's a bit overkill and also just having it right behind this seat when you're sitting here and you hear the fan come on, it's just like automatic to reach up and turn it off. We've got three batteries, they're lithium, 150 amp hours each for a total of 450 amp hours. They're down here under this seat, which is on a hinge so we can access them. The charge controller is 40 amps and uh, we think it's the perfect amount of power for what we're running. The front cab really had a ton of storage available, so we wanted to maximize the storage. We took out all of the electronic components that were up here that used to belong to the bus. This is all of our toiletries. And then over here, we keep all of the window covers. We've got a couple of curtains we put up at night and just the window shade for the front. This tiling project was one of my favorite little projects that I worked on one day. They're just stickers, really simple, bought them online, but the colors were just perfect. They really went with the aesthetic, they match our teal color, and they're really eye-catching. Everyone really likes them a lot when they first walk into the bus. People think it's just a phase. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, okay, you're gonna do this for a couple months, and then you go back and you get a regular job, and you... Yeah go back to the routine that everyone thinks they have to do with their lives. It's almost like a mental prison that we're like sold on from early age that it's like, oh, you have to live this way. You have to get married, you have to have kids, you have to have a career, you need to put money away for retirement. It's like, well, yeah, you could do all those things, but you could also say no to all those things and do your own thing. And live life and enjoy your life while you're young instead of working for 60 years. We're doing what's right for us and for our family. Everyone has to figure out on their own what makes them happy. If it's living on the bus and traveling the country and if that's gonna make you happy, I'll say go do it and just be happy because life is short and there's no certainty of how long it's gonna last. So do it while you can. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more tours of school bus conversion tiny homes, we have a playlist for you in the description.